Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're having a great day. I am here with the legendary David Morgan. But before we get started, we're gonna give you a little preview. We're gonna talk economics, supply chain, and $30 silver. Let's do this. All right, here we are. The man, the myth, the legend, David Morgan, the silver guru, the man that can do an interview and a t-shirt in his car on KitGo and get a million views. David, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's funny you bring that up. I mean, I've never, I think that's the only interview I've done a couple since I ever did in my car. And I didn't care one way or the other. Uh, but I, that's the first time I went over a million views. So that was that awesome. Is it was it was like everybody was saying it in the silver and just like man david just he just shows up and just million views. <laughs> like, did you just get out of the gym that's all i want to know <laughs> no where was i i was uh yeah i probably did just <laughs> yeah exactly yeah oh that's awesome man we're becoming good friends i i absolutely everybody just want to tell you i absolutely um cherish my relationship with david morgan because before i ever had a, a youtube channel i reached out to him and uh he spent time talking to me and chatting we conversed and really he gave me a lot of confidence to do this so then david thank you so much oh my pleasure and i'm really happy for you to go from zero to over a hundred thousand years not an easy accomplishment i mean i don't think i'm jealous i'm a little I'm mature enough to not be but it's interesting that you know my channel started in 2011 and i've got like 35,000 followers and you started in, in a year and you're triple what i am but so be it and good for you and you know you do more uh content than i do i mean i do one at least well i do about two or three interviews a week on yeah. average and i do the weekly perspective usually by myself yeah. once a week so i've got three or four things i post per week and sometimes you've got like three or two or three videos in a day <laughs> and and I just want to you know continue briefly. That's because so much is happening so fast, yeah. and to keep aboard everything that's hitting the economic scene, the food crisis, the uh, you know supply chains, the wars and rumors of wars, the uh, political elite uh, telling everybody how they're going to mandate everything down to uh, you know uh, how many steps your dog can take and what its carbon footprint is. I mean, it's getting to be. It's he just crapped out carbon right now. <laughs> Let me jump in real quick because uh, to my subscribers, you guys know that I love to blow up channels that are just starting. But um, to say that David Morgan has completely um, changed the way that I look at uh, investing and in precious metals is an understatement. So what I want to do is I'm going to uh, link his YouTube channel in the comment section below. Take a look at it. Give him a thumbs up and a subscribe. And I guarantee you, this will be a, a, a pivotal moment in your investment career because David thinks of things so much differently. He has a killer uh, a news report. And we're going to get to the questions I've got for you, but it, it's called the Morgan Report, correct? Correct. I already knew that, but I just wanted to make it sound like you, you know, knew more. All right. So let's get to some questions. So I've got some questions for you. Now, me and David don't do scripts. Just so you guys know, I don't do scripts with anybody. So I've got my number, my first question. Okay. That's, uh, let's see, I'm going to find it right here. It's down here. Yes. Mr. Morgan, you have made it pretty clear recently that you are looking at a possibility, so I guess that's not like really clear, but it's a possibility, of a $30 silver price or that you're talking about the run, the, the, the bull market in silver has begun. Is that true? Yes, it is. I mean, I started in the beginning of the year, I think just before the Wall Street bets thing became known, and then, of course, the branch off of Wall Street silver that I saw, you know, and I get pushed on this every year and I've hit and miss. Yeah. I said $30, I see $30 in, in 2000 and tw <clears throat> 2021. Yeah. And of course we probably got there in the aftermarket for one print or something, but, and I've started to be a bit discouraged like everybody else. And I've been in this market probably any more longer than anybody alive. That may not be true, but certainly that's someone that's a commentator on the market. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> And now getting, uh, looking at this rally, thinking it might hit 30 before the end of the year. As far as are we up in the next leg up, I'm pretty convinced we are. And that's because of what happened earlier in the year with the Wall Street uh, silver community, getting awareness into what sound money is all about, and what more importantly, counterparty risk is all about. Yeah. And when you own precious metals in hand, there is zero counterparty risk. 
Uh, favorable to cryptos in some cases, not so favorable. In other cases, there are some, you know, STF type coins out there. I'll leave it at that comment. Nonetheless, there's some counterparty in most of your cryptos where you have to KYC and all that stuff. And that's okay. Yeah. It's just that in a currency crisis, the money of last resort has always been precious metals. As far yeah. as uh, going up from here, once we got above 28, technically, we're pretty much on our way. We really need 30 to 33. Once we're on our 33, almost everybody that's ever bought crisp, uh, precious metals on the silver side, if anyone's bought silver in the last 20 years, that's at 33 is pretty much at a profit. Yes, there's some, there'd be a few that wouldn't be, but almost everybody. So once that happens, the technical work is very simple. No one knows how high is high. And since there's been so much strong hands moving into silver during 2020, where over 300 million ounces was bought by institutions and 200 million ounces bought in retail, that's a half a billion ounces. It's actually a little more than that, which is at least 50% of the entire annual supply. So we have a few more years like that and higher prices and a currency crisis and food shortages and uh, uncertainty in the political sphere and everything else that you've talked about on the Economic Ninja channel, all coalescing into one great big, oh my gosh, bomb. Yeah. You're going to see a run to metals like I think we haven't seen in a long time. You know, I'm glad you brought up all those because it's essentially the perfect storm because um, I used to use the example of before Bitcoin hit $10,000, I said, when it hits $10,000, people are going to go nuts. And the people that were waiting to get in are going to get in because you go from a four digit number to a, a five digit number. Then I said, when it hits 10, 100,000, which will probably come pretty soon in the next few months, we're going to see, um, and hey, not investment advice, got to blah, 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 that. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a dude with a bro and a dream. Um, People will lose their minds at 100,000, right? Well, it sounds funny. We're going from, we're talking $10,000, $100,000 Bitcoin, but I'm more excited about $30 silver. And the reason why is because, like you said, with all these converging um, issues in the economy, when we break over 30 and we close above it for a few days, and especially that 33 handle, you're absolutely correct. People are going to feel a new sh like wave. This shock wave is going to go through the, the world when it comes to the investing community looking at silver. And especially, it sounds crazy, the cryptocurrency crowd, because I hear all the time, cryptocurrency people that have been very successful in this market, they started as gold and silver bugs. And there's a lot of charts out there that show that the next top, quite possibly, in the markets can show um, markets topping altogether, but then gold and silver, like in 2008, bottoming first, the paper contracts, and people diving in from crypto and stocks into those precious metals. And I think that could cause a fury of demand. You know, I'm going to add something, and I don't think I'll get in trouble, but uh, I just watched this morning a uh, interview done with the crypto viewing folks. I am a subscriber, so obviously I have access because I pay them. And what was very interesting, and a shout out to Dick Allgaier and everybody there, Edward Reardon and uh, Daz Smith, I think, believe it is, and I think there's one other and, and they, uh, one of their leaders. They're all great people, in my opinion. But what Dick did was this interview with Andy Sheckman and Marty, their technical guy, mm -hmm. and talked about moving some crypto profits into silver and just let Andy run and tell the facts about silver market. So tip of the hat to, uh, to the whole crypto viewing uh, group and uh, especially, I guess, uh, Dick, because Dick had the uh, foresight to see, you know, it's not, it's not always good to be in a a runaway profit zone and not put something into diversification, yep. which is what basically they were suggesting. They're not financial uh, registered financial advisors either. Yeah. But uh, so I thought that was interesting. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you have or are developing a relationship with uh, with Miles Franklin. Yeah, yeah, and actually, we can take uh, cryptocurrency as well. To um, to, we could take Bitcoin to to purchase silver. So, which is going to be cool because I'm going to be able to report firsthand. Um, uh, my family is uh, taking on that position to become licensed uh, gold and silver brokers through Miles Franklin. But you know, I know Dick. Uh, actually, it's funny. In 2017, when we met, uh, we were chatting uh, about. Or I'm sorry, 2019. It was actually the week everything started in a, a land far, far away called China, and. Uh, 
And when I met him, we were talking about the, the biggest movers in the market and uh, me and him agreed completely. And it's funny because these cycles, the crypto and silver cycle, we believe may move perfectly. And when I say that, that silver will, I believe this is investment advice that we're not going to see an over $50 uh, dollar silver price until crypto tops, that cycle tops along with stocks starts to come down. And then we're going to see the move from that into uh, to precious metals. And it's just going to rock. Very similar to what happened after the Lehman crisis when it bottomed in November. Great. Yeah. So um, speaking of which, uh, you have, I want to explain to people, because I think it's incredibly important because you have some free stuff on the Morgan Report, correct? And just, you know, everybody, uh, David did not know I was going to do this. So you have some uh, free information on the Morgan Report that people can go to and check out, right? Yeah, the best thing to do really is just go to our landing page, which is themorganreport.com and get on our free email list. Yeah. And uh, if you don't want to do that, the best, next best thing is go to themorganreport.com and go to the blog. Almost all the public interviews I do, we post for free for everybody. And if you're new, or actually, even if you're not new, you might type in uh, 10 Rules of Silver Investing by David Morgan. And those are pithy and they're pertinent. And it will keep most people from making a mistake. A lot of rookie mistakes are made by buying the wrong kind of metal at the wrong time or not understanding, you know, the little uh, idiosyncrasies that are uh, in the market. And I've spelled out very clearly uh, how to start out. And even if you're not, uh, as I say, a beginner, it might be a nice review. So that's for free. That's been in the public for a very long time. And I really used to give it out for free when they signed up for the newsletter. It's so old, it's almost two, 20 years old. However, you know, principles don't go away. I mean, if you're a man of principle and you live your life in certain uh, parameters, they stay with you basically forever. So these, I'm not saying these things aren't stone, yeah. but they're close to it. <laughs> but yeah. uh, they, are, they will help. That's the whole purpose. So okay. now you can just, you know, check those out. The other thing is, um, questions you know i have a paid service as well and you're allowed to write a question a month to me and it's usually directly uh answered by one myself or one of my staff and often there's such good questions i'll make a video so there's a you know electronic newsletter you get once a month and then during that month several times usually three or four during that month i will answer several questions that are you know important to the uh paid membership and make comments or whatever, but let me hand it back to you. I just want to know one thing. Yeah. And that is, it's what is your thought on counterparty risk? Mine is that the precious metals offer the best uh, counterparty risk profile out there. What do you think? Uh, is there anything better? I, hmm. So I don't think there is. However, with Bitcoin, I do think there are some, some amazing uh, differences, right? Um, I, I am a, of the camp that we are not going to use um, silver and gold as a monetary system outside of using it as a store of value, uh, just because there's so little of it, you know, to sit there and think that you could just dole out a bunch of silver coins or gold coins to the world now and go, well, here you go, just use it as money. You can't do it. That's what gets me excited about its value. Um, with, with solid, and I mean really solid decentralized blockchains like Bitcoin, Digibyte, Litecoin, UXTO blockchains, that brings in a totally different um, uh, animal, but people need to understand everything is cyclical. And I don't think people realize that. They always think that everything is forever. Mm -hmm. and if anything, his, modern history has taught us um, like what we're about to go through now, which I say is uh, going to be worse than the Great Depression because we have nothing to model it by. Because even if you wanted to go back to this flu of, uh, was it uh, 1918, uh, they didn't have this much of the world buy off on it. So let's just keep that in mind. So uh, as far as an investment, there's nothing better than God's money. 100%, my, my opinion, gold and silver. So I hope I answered that question for you. You did indeed. I just have to, you know me, it's hard to shut me up at times. <laughs> I just have to comment. Uh, I always start the morning report with a quote on what you said about the depression. And this is not for fun and games. This is actually serious. This is a quote from Elliot Janeway long deceased, I think he died in the early 90s. But this quote, I used it in the newsletter months ago, the next Great Depression will make the last Great Depression look like a small technical correction. Now, I don't say that to be funny. I say it really with a heavy heart. Yeah. But uh, the reason being is several. 
it's the population size, and it's primarily uh, how we make a living. And the Great Depression of the 30s the, on, in the U.S., I think it's 70%, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a large contingency that were agrarian. They were close to the land that could grow food or animal hum, husbandry or that type of thing. But that's not the case now. I think it's like one and a half percent. It's all, almost all corporate. Yes, there are family farms, but not many. So, you know, does it mean the end of the world? And like we did, you know, we had an interview previous that uh, <clears throat> I asked you a couple of questions and you gave the metaphor of standing on the railroad tracks and the train's coming and you can, you know, look down at your feet and wait for it to hit you or you could apprise the situation and do something about it. And you, it's an opportunity to get excited about it. Uh, same thing here. I'd like you to go ahead and take it from there. No, I mean, it's literally, sorry, my batteries are on low. Had some juice. It's literally as simple as just going, train's coming. I'm just going to get out of the way. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's amazing. And that, that's why I think it's exciting. And so let me do this. Let's close on this. Ninja Nation, I love blowing up channels. And to say that I've been blessed with David's friendship is an understatement. I want you to please go over there. Hashtag David Morgan in the uh, comment section below. And please go over to his site. Hit the subscribe button. I mean, for heaven's sake, honestly, the guy can show up in a car in his t-shirt with Kitco and get a million views. There's a reason for that. It's because when you hear his name, you listen. And so, David, again, thank you so much for jumping on the channel. My pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Right on. With that being said, guys, the Economic Ninja is out.